All right, recording has started, and this is the January 10th, 2023. Welcome 2023, folks. Uh, Rook Community Meeting. So let's go ahead and get started with a milestone checkup. Uh, I have been offline and sick for a, quite a bit, so I'm definitely out of the loop on a number of things. Uh, so we will dive into things, and obviously Travis will pick us up with a lot of good details. So uh, with nothing uh, that looks planned for a uh, patch release for 1.9, so I think we can skip over that one. Uh, 1.10, uh, we did get a 1.10.8 release out. Um, I don't know if that was, yeah, definitely probably since the last community meeting since we skipped one over. The, no, no, uh, that's not a good link. Travis? Oh, where's hmm. it going? Yeah. Going to six. Let's see if, uh, there we it's, go. Yeah, so let me, wrong link. let me fix this link real quick. Updated the text, but not the link. There we go. Okay. So then here we go. So yes, this was three weeks ago, but uh, so during, I guess, a little bit before the holiday time, but uh, definitely since the last community meeting, I think. So do you want to go over anything uh, of importance here, Travis? Oh boy, that was, yeah, that was before the break. So I think it was just, we got some fixes out before the break and I can't remember any specific ones to talk about here. So, yep, I think it is what it is. Nobody's complained about the release at least, so it must have been okay. Oh, we can push on forward then to something of uh, more relevance then. So we're planning on doing a 1.10.9 uh, then this Thursday. Yeah, so two days from now. So let's talk about the 1.10 board then and uh, what might be ready to go out and anything. It doesn't look like anything's blocking uh, the one dot, uh, this, this, this next 1.10 patch. Exactly. Yeah, it'll just be the kind of the cadence to get back into our biweekly releases. Um, nothing super urgent, just a couple of things in the in progress column there that would be nice to, to get done. Uh, the first one there, Shabam has been looking at for a while. and uh, has had a challenge in getting that tested or finalized, but I probably won't make it in this release. But that second one, I just started looking at it, it's just a tiny fix. So I'll get that in. And then other things in the to-do column, I was just looking at, uh, they're just, it'd be nice to get them when we can or um, help people troubleshoot things. So yeah, nice. uh, anybody yeah. else have any specific thoughts for the release? Yeah, but overall, this is just, you know, getting us back on our normal cadence to start off 2023. Exactly. Um, maybe real quick, the object storage page doesn't load in the Ceph dash bot by default. I still have that on my radar. Um, just haven't gotten to that yet. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for taking a look at that one. I know, you know Jiffin has been our RGW contact. Uh, I think he's been off a bunch with the uh, end of the year. So hope, hope to see him back online soon too. All right, uh, so that's things that are in scope for 1.10 releases, and then uh, also working towards 1.11 in the mid-February timeframe, so a little bit more than a month away from now. So uh, let's take a look at that project board and see some of the progress that's going on there. Mm -hmm. Now, the 1.11 release, honestly, for me, is going to be the first one where I'm not sure we have any super big features to report. It's going to be just a lot of new you know, maintenance things, of course, you know, progress, progress, but a lot of the things we've been working on have been backported to 1.10 in those releases already. So this is going to be more of a kind of just, oh, time for a minor release on some sort of cadence. It'll have been like five months, I think, since our last release. Or we're just, you know, we're, we're in a good place where we're stable. So I don't think we need to release more often. It's just, um, the, yeah, just delivering things, um, but that maybe no, not as many big features this time, unless we add them in the next one. Let's see things in progress on the board. I mean, yeah, like the one in progress there, it shows we're just updating our min Kubernetes version and still trying to get the 1.26 build to work because we're waiting for an update for Minikube. Um, yeah, updating the CI. Some other things, updating operator SDK. I think that doesn't really affect it, the upstream so much. 
Cause and Travis, is that is that uh, implying a, a, like a fix to actually upstream operator SDK, like the actual SDK itself outside of, you know, the context of the Rook project? Or is that something that's like within our building and packaging within Rook? No, that, that's within Rook. We're, oh. We are generating some CSV uh, with the operator SDK that's used. It's really only used for downstream, the output of that. We're just using an older version. So we almost don't even need to track this for the upstream release because it's a downstream artifact, um, but it's related to the CI. We do use it in the CI because it could be used for other things, things other than our downstream project. Got it, got if it. We wanted cool. to integrate with some, or do something with the, what's it called? The, the online um, operator hub, that's it, that we've, <laughs> you know, we've still got Rook 1.1, on the operator hub, we never, never updated it or anything. So it's just not been a exactly. priority or nobody seems it, to care. What's the what's the scope of, of that? Since, you know, like we use the operator SDK, we do like the downstream packaging, et cetera. Is that like a very light lift to also to get, you know, the uh, operator hub entry updated? Well, the, I think with Operator Hub, we figured out, well, there should be a way to kind of automate the process or automatically open a PR, at least, in the Operator Hub that would update it. But honestly, even doing any CI worker on that, it, it doesn't, it, the benefit doesn't seem obvious to me because nobody seems to notice or, or care about it. So I'd almost rather Does it make just sense remove it because yeah, it's yeah, so exactly. old. Yeah. Uh, we really should remove it instead of just leaving it stale. I guess for visibility, it's stayed there, but I, I feel like we should be getting more reports on 1.1 issues if people actually used it in the first place. Is there, are there any, uh, out, out, of, um, out of curiosity, are there any uh, like metrics available from uh, Operator Hub that show you know how many downloads there are or anything like that, as, if it's getting any usage there? That's a good question. Yeah, it's not that I've seen. Maybe we could reach out and ask him. How about a how about an artifact hub? Is that something that's um, updated regularly? Artifact hub. Uh, yeah, that's like CNC the CNCF's uh, aggregation marketplace thing for for operators and um, you know cloud native thingies okay uh i haven't done anything with that so i don't think we've done that artifact hub no, well, there's a fair amount of hits on, name of for rook on that Art, 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 i'll uh yeah i'll link it here it's not Art, kind of sorry just hijacking a little bit here yeah oh artifact hub that io i see but Maybe at least real quick when I'm looking or like when I search on artifact hub for Rook, um, do we have an official entry? I guess, or like I did, the first one I see is organization Falco, repo security hub, and version one dot oh update. Yeah, so those so there's there's more than just operators. There's uh, it's like mm -hmm. supposed to be an aggregation point for all sorts of uh, cloud native ecosystem uh, stuff. So that that's the set of Falco rules. Uh, for oh, like securing okay. Rook. Uh -huh. yeah. oh. And then the oh, second there's... entry is Rook with the latest version of our Helm chart, at least. I, j I just found something that is also a little bit older, which is Rook HFS. Install and maintain HFS storage cluster version 1.01. 1. Um, yeah. Updated two years ago. Yeah. So that is a little older. Yeah. Oh, well, and obviously um, the Rook out stuff is appearing as well, which is like Rook, Rook out. Yeah, well. Not even uh, Rook, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. You know, with all these hubs, the operator hub, the this artifact hub, it feels like stuff just gets outdated. So if they want to use Rook, just come to Rook and use, use our Helm charts and or whatever. I mean, it makes, I mean, if there's, if they were destinations, like strong destinations for people to go and, and uh, you know, like find the software they want to use, then having, you know, an automated build process that, you know, that's just another destination for where our 
packages, images, binaries, whatever, go to, uh, get published to automatically without even thinking about it. Um, that would make a lot of sense. Um, you know, Travis, it, it, it might make sense here to, uh, in the next uh, sync up with the CNCF to ask about Artifact Hub. Um, like if that is something right. that has the traction, is it something that they want us to invest in? Um, you know, is that something that we should put any time into? Yeah, good question. Oh, we just like... met with them yesterday, so next month. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe I, as another point, point of view on that, if there's like any governance, I guess, going on there, or like any like deprecation policy, but maybe let's call it more like that. Because like some yeah, that's a great great question, there, Alexander. Four years ago, from someone that I haven't heard of, at least, I have to put it like that, where. Um, yeah, like this, it, it's kind of again with, or I guess it's this. Um, it kind of feels like this situation where like companies don't necessarily want to like give you a download to like binaries or something, because they always want to have like the latest version on the website, you know, where like um, that they are in control, I guess. And it's kind of you know, it kind of feels like the same for Roop right now, where there seems to be older versions, and that might cause issues for people if they really use it, obviously. But like, um, might be something to just in general bring up to the CNCF slash the artifact to help people there. Um, if they're aware of that or if there's anything that we can do then yeah that definitely makes sense alexander um and then here operator hub entry is super old we're not getting oh and uh, the operator framework by the way um uh, rook self entry seems to pop up travis as well which entry pops up the operator framework thing oh right yeah, let me just send you the link in the chat here. This seems to be at least it, right? Yeah, one mm -hmm. point one point one point one point one. Did I say that right? Yeah. yeah. Um and Rook and Yeah. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Let's see, like I said, at least on how, how I see it. Um, this might be even just in general something to bring up to the artifact hub people in regards to like as I put it governance slash like who cons who controls it to some degree. Um, let's see what they say. Yeah. Oh, so this is the same entry that we were talking about being old and operator hub, right? It's like kind of point just pointing to like redirecting to it, kind of. Yeah, seems like it. Huh. At least how I understand other pick up so far. <laughs> it's, uh... Oh yeah, here we go. The, the install instructions say operator have that I, uh... hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so yeah, sorry for the tangent. I think that got started from a conversation while we're still looking at the 1.1 board. Um, so anything else to be said about 1.1 before we move into the planned agenda items? All right. For now. All right. We'll keep making progress on that. Uh, we still have a, a little bit over a month to before that release comes out. So we'll keep making progress and we'll talk more about it again next community meeting. Uh, so we talked about this, uh, so let's move on then to the planned agenda items of uh, the retrospective of the web, the Rook.io website going down. So let's pull up this issue here, and then Alexander uh, and Travis, uh, we'll listen to your thoughts on that one. Yeah, um, if you could you maybe scroll down to, or like, let me maybe real quick explain what, what, what happened, basically. What ha happened on the surface was that... Um, if you accessed rook.io, you got redirected to rook man, uh, rook hyphen github hyphen io. Uh, <laughs> the period curve period dev. Um, the reason for that is was more or less it was because it's fixed now. Um, that when I restructured the documentation to use MK docs. Um, I seem to have pushed the CNAME file. I don't know who's uh, who knows about GitHub page, but that file more or less is like a, this is the custom domain, I guess, or like the 
custom address for the website then. Um, but if this is in use, which it was, because we the current technology still had the uh, rook.github.io pages fork going, where we had published the GitHub pages for testing. Um, and after the comment from uh, Travis in uh, one of the um, in of the the related to the search results to the like old versions popping up in the search results, uh, I went ahead and unpublished the GitHub pages on our fork because I also didn't want that to pop up in the search results on Google or wherever. Um, and because of that, the uh, rook hyphen GitHub hyphen IO curdev uh, domain, so to say, got freed up. And then because of this CNAME file existing in the rook GitHub IO. GitHub Pages branch that is published by GitHub Pages. Um, it got basically like GitHub Pages forces like auto redirects you to this C name then. Um, at least in some cases, it's a bit unclear. GitHub Pages is, feels sometimes a bit inconsistent, but that's beside the point. And because of like this C name file existing and us deleting or unpublishing the GitHub Pages on our fork, like this whole redirect thing happened. It wasn't like a DNS issue or something. It was purely based on GitHub pages, then redirecting <clears throat> to the actual domain, so to say, or like to the actual address. Um, and yeah, fixed it basically by removing the CNAME file for now there. And to mitigate the issue, we set up um, a redirect from the rook hyphen GitHub hyphen IO curdev subdomain to at least the rook.github.io uh, website that like in those hours there was then a little bit less downtime. Mm -hmm. Any questions to the outage or like why it happened? <laughs> yeah, so I think a couple of things just came together and just yeah, basically. Well, it just wasn't great, but yeah, well, at least we know the root cause and we can avoid it in the future. And well, it's just fixed, so we don't expect it to happen again. Yep. And I guess and, uh, as a bit of a point, it, or at least as a kind of like removing layers from the equation, it might be worth uh, for us to jump into the uh, AWS, um, uh, AWS uh, settings for a root. And um, maybe, I don't know, like as I, I think I told you, Travis, like maybe removing the caching layer of the website and just having mm -hmm. GitHub pages handle it completely. Um, I don't know necessarily if that's, I guess, worth it. Um, but if would yeah. Or even if there's a timeout that's shorter than, yeah, because it was like 12 or 24 hours for the default cache to yeah. expire. So then that, even after you fixed it, it took yeah. a few hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's either we just decrease the cache, I guess, to be maybe just two or three hours, or we maybe even remove the whole caching for the website from AWS. It's like technically we have it on GitHub Pages, anyways. And it's so if you visit Rook.io, you basically go to AWS, uh, end up at the caching layer. Of what is called the uh, front, uh, front right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, cloud front exactly. Cloud front. And cloud front basically talks to GitHub pages and yeah, well, then you get the content or if it's cached then you, yeah, well. So it, it has an advantage just having this layer, but I think at least from a configuration side, reducing that to like an hour or just a few hours um, might make sense just in general in regards to updates to the documentation, I guess. Well, because whenever I, the documentation is updated, like we push the build, I can see the documentation immediately updated on the mm -hmm. site. So uh, maybe in this case, because there was a file deleted, then the cache didn't recognize the file was deleted. Maybe updates are immediate, oh, but yeah. not deletions anyway. Yeah, because technically there wasn't anything deleted. GitHub page just simply was like, oh, nope, wrong domain. Got to go to Rook, I, uh, Rook GitHub IO code F. Um, and Alex, where was the, the C name file? I was just looking on the other screen here for like a, a PR that maybe would delete it from this yep. uh, repo here, but I didn't see that uh, in because, any- Because we don't use it. That's the thing. It ended up there because we in the fork uh, set up 
that's kind of a bit of a it's fine that it exists but like if you go to the settings of the repository um and go to github pages you can go there safely um uh da, 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 whatever you have it uh, you have the option to like for example select deploy from a branch mm. and technically you even have the or should have the option i'm not seeing it for the rook uh oh, well it's the rook project let me just switch to the github io project um to deploy from a fork uh no indirectly but you can also deploy forks to your own domains or like to your own custom github io page. oh yeah yeah and i said like because during testing of our fork like with the M full mk docs changes if you remember um we like set it to a custom domain that we can well easily test it so that cname file ended up in the repository and i said like because we still use that domain it was blocked till we took down our fork and then the github uh, pages was like oh it's free so bam it you know starts redirecting people to the, in our case, then wrong domain. So Jared, to answer your question, I think you can see the change if you look at the a commit, the last commit on the branch, the GitHub pages branch, since it publishes from the branch, it's, it's really definitely odd that it's not a pull request, but if you change to that branch, you'll and the history will show now it's pushed. Yep. That's that's the thing as well. Like if you change the setting, it actually creates or deletes the CNAME file um, on the go. Like if you go to the settings page of the repository, uh, do, oh, you're not. I I, uh, I won't uh, be able to do that here because I uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not signed in uh, on this browser. Yeah, so it's only publicly accessible stuff. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. I do that on purpose for all community meetings that I that I run is that I I don't have uh, privately viewable stuff. I can give a thumbs up to that. I had to cut a, a meeting recording once uh, because I <laughs> like an ad in Google Docs and it was like, here, 10 customer emails. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to expose anything like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, so at least in like GitHub page or settings, um, if you <clears> change or like if you set or even then remove the custom domain, it basically automatically creates like a commit to create or remove that file for you. And then basically just went into that settings, uh, press delete, uh, remove or manually de de deleted it. Um, that it get, that it, we get it working again. Ah, and then Travis basically five days ago, exactly answered what I just asked. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> it took me a few minutes to find that commit to like, wait, where was the change? <laughs> so. Yep, okay. Cool. Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, that's good that we understand. We have an understanding of, of, you know, what happened there. Thanks, Alex, for kind of peeling the layers of the onion back there and getting to an understanding of the root cause. Um, and then I, I believe then from your explanations, it sounds like, uh, you know, we're not uh, at risk for this happening again, uh, now that we've, you know, got things configured and set up the way they are now. Exactly. Yeah. I said, this was really just a I guess in general, a thing waiting to happen because as a CNAME file existing due to the testing, I didn't really reckon, like I didn't bat an eye. And then, like, just, oh, yeah, let me take down the fork um, of the Rook I get up IO pages. And then I said, like, it got freed up. So, yeah, <laughs> shouldn't happen. Yep. Anymore. Cool. Uh, all right, sweet. So, uh, if nothing else on that topic, then we can go ahead and move to the next one here. Mm -hmm. um that Let's was see. the one with the search results right oh just to follow up i think yeah we got this resolved so we we had some old google search results showing up but so i went and cleared out some or submitted a request to remove some prefixes from the search results and i think we got the old versions of the docs removed and it, yes uh, good. good that's now. the only thing i found yeah. to work for that it's infuriating that you know, normal indexing doesn't uh, doesn't handle it well. Right. Yep. So we're good there. So we're good there. All right. Great. Sounds good. All right. Let's uh, then let's go ahead and talk about the uh, data on Kubernetes community too. Right. So this data on Kubernetes community, uh, honestly, it, it's just something that came on my radar last month. Like, oh, what is this thing? Oh, maybe we should join. Uh, it sounds like it just totally makes sense. Uh, if people are already familiar with it. There's the website link to the website and then some slides that discuss uh, kind of what their goals are and um, what, how we could benefit by by joining. 
but basically uh, we could be the first community sponsor for for data on kubernetes community and they they set up events they're going to have meetups they're going to have sound like even full conferences eventually uh, that they're still getting underway with that but i think it just makes sense for us to say hey we're a community project we think it's great to get together and talk about data it, it's just more visibility for rook and um, at the same time i think it'd be great if we're you know, multiple maintainers are on board then it's not one person trying to to run it all but so maybe if we yeah i don't i don't have any there's no sort of speaking commitment uh yet but it's kind of like yes oh here's something coming up let's participate or i think there's a virtual uh meetup where we might be able to present in a couple months just oh here's a community project come learn about rook um, hey and travis you're, you're not all goodness yeah yeah and and you know this is um this is like what I believe to be an evolution, right, of the uh, group that uh, that we were participating with that put on the cloud native storage uh, day events as co-located zero day events at KubeCon, right? It's, it's the same group of companies. It's the same people behind it, I believe. So I think this is the evolution of that group. Um, so those were good people. Those were good events. Um, that was that was definitely a, a useful a useful way to spend our time a few years ago on this. So yeah. that all definitely all makes sense to me participating in this. Um, now, from what you were saying, Travis, I wasn't quite sure if I understood it. Uh, you know, you're talking about being the first community sponsor uh, for data on Kubernetes community. So are, are they making a distinction between like data on Kubernetes, like as a vendor group or a group that does events th that are vendor backed and vendor sponsored and then a, a, a parallel? group that is the community focused one or is it are you just saying there hasn't it's all been vendor sponsors so far and we would be the first community sponsor to the still the same entity the same group not a parallel offshoot group or something right that's what it is it's really just okay. been paid sponsor company sponsorships until now and they're got it adding this community sponsorship thing where it just makes sense for rook and like yeah red hat had been a, a sponsor in the past and um, now with IBM, we're looking at trying to get IBM as an official sponsor of this group, but then work at the same time as community. And, and anyway, yeah, so that Red Hat will be replaced by IBM since our whole storage group just moved over. Right, right. And anyway, I think unless there's any reason not to do this or anybody has any concerns, I think I'll go ahead and tell them, yep, let's officially sign up. And in the maintainers Slack channel, I put some more details about uh, what Melissa, uh, um, she's the CEO of this group, I think, for leading the effort. Um, yeah, she gave some guidelines, for kind of their, uh, um, what do you call it, their governance, governance for how they'll consider upstream community sponsors to get that free sponsorship. And I think it all just, yep, goes along with our philosophies and, and what would make sense for us. Do we, um, something that I found some value in Travis a few years ago was, um, you know, participating in the planning and, you know, program selection and stuff like that uh, for the, uh, the events that they put on. Um, does being a community sponsor give you some access to that as well uh, to be able to participate in, you know, putting together the, the uh, agenda and schedule for these events and, you know, being a speaker and stuff too, or is it like, a different path um i would imagine there's some opportunity for that i don't remember that being part of the of that, that uh, write-up that she had that governance but that's a good question cool uh either way like yeah this makes i mean like rook should be represented in this in this group there's there's no question in my mind about that right like rook, rook should have representation there all right so yeah this is all good yeah. in my book and I feel like I've dropped the ball in past conferences and not getting more involved with that storage group. It's like, I don't know, it was something about the cutthroat vendors for storage. I mean, it's a competitive group, right? And they all want their piece of it. And I just didn't want to get involved with that after it was hard enough just getting work graduated based on that, all that process. But anyway, we're, we're coming together. And it's, it's good to foster the community. All right.
rising tide lifts all boats. Right. Yep. Cool. All right. And then, uh, yes, yeah, so the finalized speakers for KubeCon, I think this is uh, January 27, I think, is the deadline for that, right? Yep, exactly. And uh, yeah, they published their guidelines for traveling. And it looks like, you know, it's so open and not crazy COVID restrictions anymore. So if we Are can- Are you going to go to Amsterdam, you think? So I'd like to go to Amsterdam. I still need They're to nice. make sure with IBM funding or whatever, that won't be a problem. But for those speaking at conferences, theoretically, we'll be able to do that, at least even if we don't have big team meetings at conferences like we used to. Um, yeah, it seems like budgets are locked down since COVID. They haven't lifted those lockdowns. <laughs> no. So, well, yeah, I'm hoping to be there. And for the, as far as who the speakers are, so they, to get four, so they'll allow us up to four free tickets essentially for four speakers. Uh, but if we want four speakers, we do have to have uh, at least one female on that, that group. And so I think we've got two possible possibilities there. We've got uh, Annette Cluett. I've talked to her. She said she might be willing to go. And then I think the other one is Topeka, yeah, working with Alexander's team now. Um, I don't know if she would, how much she would want to go, Alexander, but we could work that out offline yeah. as far as who's, who could be there. Um, but by default, maybe. Who, who I'm thinking makes sense. Alexander, Blaine, and I, uh, plus either Annette or um, or Topeka. There was and also uh, there was also a requirement, Travis, about uh, a uh, um, organization uh, company diversity as well. I I can't remember what it said exactly, but you know it said obviously uh, that's right majority of one company but if it was like half like 50 percent two out of the four like you know two people from ibm out of it um that's not an issue right i forgot about that yeah we can only have two from the same company so yep that's so a good point so like we'd have to deepika well deepika myself from Kerr and you two from right hand then sorry oh, deepika's uh, what IBM. I, uh, deepika is working for Kerr, so I guess two two would be done fine. Oh. Oh, if we had two and two, that I guess that's. Yeah. If it's the fifty percent uh, rule. Right. So, yeah, that that combination that, could work. Yeah, right. that combination could work. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, sweet. Well, it would be an absolute pleasure to see you, uh, you cool folks at a CubeCon again. It's been been too. And long. you'll be there. Uh, I'm planning on it. Yeah, I'll be I'll be in Europe uh, already um that, that's my plan so it's uh it, it would be a, a train ride i think for me to go from brussels to amsterdam so i okay. i don't see any, any reason why I, I i wouldn't attend as well um that's that should be in the cards cool. for me yeah i mean i mean alex hung out uh, a bit in detroit uh as well so it'd be good to see you san fools francisco over well. in amsterdam yeah san francisco as well don't forget that <laughs> san francisco oh yeah, <laughs> yeah i went well i went an additional week <laughs> Just so you know, when I'm there, why not? Why not? Cool, cool. All right. Uh, so yeah. Um, then so we, yeah, we get that <coughs> sorry, submitted for the deadline. Um, cool. Then that's the end of the agenda items. Anything else that folks wanted to bring up that's not on the agenda? Uh, I just wanted to quickly highlight. I realized um, when we were going through the one point eleven project board. Um, conspicuously absent was um, the, uh, I mean, I, I've started doing uh, like kind of prototyping and research on uh, setting up <clears throat> active active NFS such that it goes through a load balancer like HA proxy. And um, that's a, a, a fair bit of work to kind of get get done and get moving and I wanted to make sure that was captured and it should be on the project board now. Uh you you added cool. it. So oh, here it is down here, Blaine. Yeah. To do are you is it actively in progress right now? Do you want me to shift it over to or, or do you want to shift it over to in progress? 
Um, I, I was kind of debating whether what column it should be in. Uh, currently, I'm prototyping. I suppose that is in progress in a way. Um, but I, I don't have like a design doc uh, okay. going yet. Um, yeah, feel free. I mean, you know, if you're spending some time, spending some cycles on it, yeah, feel free to just go ahead and throw it in, in progress. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Okay. Yeah, will do. Sweet. All right. Thanks for that update, Blaine. Yeah. All right. Uh, then if there's nothing else, then we can go ahead and adjourn to, for today. And then uh, there may be a, a, a bit of a backlog for the last community meeting that didn't get uploaded to YouTube. So I'll make sure that when I get the recording for today, that I'll upload that in, uh, very quick and then make sure that if there's any missing ones from uh, December that they'll get uploaded too. Thanks for doing that. All right, good to see you all today. Yep, you too, good to have you in the meeting here. We've missed yeah. you for a while. For sure. All right. See you all soon. Bye-bye. See ya. All right. See you. See you. Bye.